Hello again, everyone. It's Professor Davis here to talk to you about Newman projections. Uh, to give you a brief introduction to Newman projections, I'd like to consider a very basic organic molecule. That's ethane. Ethane is a very simple hydrocarbon with the formula C2H6. And this molecule can be represented in a number of ways, many of which you've probably already seen. For example, it can be shown as a skeletal structure which in the case of ethane is simply a straight line. Slightly more complex and containing a little bit more information is the condensed structure in which the carbon and hydrogen atoms are all written however their bonding arrangements are not shown they're simply understood. To show the bonding arrangements very specifically we turn to the Kekulé structure in which all atoms and all bonds are shown but geometric information is very sparse. Finally, we can get some information about the geometry of the molecule using the perspective formula in which dashed and wedged bonds indicate hydrogens in this case going behind and in front of the plane of the page respectively. And although the perspective molecular formula does show us a little bit about stereochemistry and geometry and bond angles, it's difficult to represent very specific dihedrals in other words, if we were interested in the angle between carbon-hydrogen bonds, such as those highlighted here, we would have a difficult time demonstrating that using any of the structures that we've already learned to draw. When we want to give very specific information about these dihedral angles, we turn to Newman projections. So let's begin exploring Newman projections by going back to our ethane molecule. Now recall that the perspective structure does give us some three-dimensional information, but it makes it difficult to draw these compounds with very specific dihedral angles between different carbon-hydrogen bonds in the case of ethane. In order to get a more accurate depiction of a very specific rhodomeric state, we turn to Newman projections. And to do this, we cite along one of the internal backbone bonds, in this case the carbon-carbon bond of ethane. In order to look along this bond, naturally I'll have to rotate this molecule. So let's do that now. As you can see, rotating the molecule in such a way that we're sighting along the carbon-carbon bond makes the dihedral angles between all the CH bonds within the molecule very apparent. And we can sketch this using the Newman projection. A typical Newman projection will look something like this a circle with three substituents which have bonds drawn in front of it and three additional substituents with bonds drawn behind it. The way we interpret Newman projections is as follows. Those substituents whose bonds can be seen all the way to the center are the ones in the front, whereas those substituents whose bonds are obscured by the central atoms are those in the back. Therefore, using these Newman projections, it's very easy for us to compare the angles between and among those front and back substituents. And these would be the four bond dihedrals. In this case, it's very apparent that the dihedral angle between the two indicated hydrogens is 60 degrees. What makes Newman projections particularly uh, valuable is that we can draw them with any dihedral angle that we choose depending upon the point we'd like to make or the discussion we'd like to have. We can simply do this by rotating the central carbon-carbon bond and then redrawing the Newman projection with the resulting angles. For example, let's say that I wanted to draw an eclipsed conformation for ethane. In order to do this, I'll rotate my carbon-carbon bond by 60 degrees. Now you'll notice that the atoms in the back uh, would be completely eclipsed, so I've left just a degree or two uh, off of 60 here to be sure that you can see them. And to convey this using my Newman projection, I simply rotate those substituents in the back an analogous amount, which would look something like this. As you can see, a Newman projection gives us a very rapid way to convey a very specific bond angle. Next time, we'll take a look at how substituents can affect how Newman projections look. And I'll see you then.